two classifications basically is one is the adolescent acne which is the acne that occurs when you go into get into a uh, adolescent stage and your hormones are, in, are coming out two things in particular happen and the sebaceous gland the oil gland or the pilosebaceous unit those are little pores there uh, are increase their sebum secretion and with that also there's what we call the hyperkeratinization that is the thickening that then becomes a plug at the follicular pore. With that, the organisms that are natural or in the follicular unit begin to change such that inflammation occurs and you will eventually from the whitehead blackhead of the keratosis, it becomes inflamed and becomes a thicker one called a papule with pus it's called a postule and if it's really bad you get cysts. That's adolescent acne. And then there's adult acne. And adult acne is a lot more complicated in that it can be caused, in addition to the stress from the hormones, it's also caused by stress from daily living or due to your profession, COVID, you know, and uh, the stress can also be due to chemicals that are in the air more often nowadays when we stay home and but when you go out also there are chemicals in the air pollutants and all which can also challenge the the skin so those are stresses there are some ingredients in products that actually are comedogenic they induce that plug in the follicle sem similar to the inducement of that plug of the follicle due to adolescence where the hyperkeratinization occurs. And the difference between acnegen and comedogen is that the comedogen, if you were to apply a chemical a product that has a comedogen on it, it takes a while before whiteheads and blackheads actually develop. Whereas an acnegen is different in that there is some inflammatory factor in the product that you're applying so that within a short time, it may be immediately, it may be just a week or so, the acne becomes inflamed. So that's an acne gen. They're different. There are a couple of uh, acne-like spots on the skin, which is really not acne, but they look so similar. Like, for instance, there's something called Malassezia, lovely name. It was used to be called Pterosporum. So Malassezia folliculitis. So it's really just an inflammation of the hair follicle brought on by the increase in numbers of a fungus, which is a natural inhabitant hair follicle. But when the microbiota there of the follicular unit is altered because of applying steroids, because of uh, taking antibiotics internally and upsetting your microbiota on the skin as well. You know, things like that will therefore give you the fungus uh, no longer in balance with the other organisms like the Propionobacterium acnes, which is a bacteria, or by another bug in the skin, which is the Demodex folliculorum. These are for tiny little mites. So those two can produce a folliculitis. Halogens are very important nowadays in that we do get something called halogen acne as a concomitant or aggravating factor in acne of any kind. Uh, halogens are essential, one of the essential elements and examples of halogens are bromide, iodide, chloride, uh, uh, fluoride and um, you know the pseudo halogen is something called vitamin B. Uh, so those are acnegenic. They actually induce uh, pimples to occur, acne to occur. Examples, therefore, are people. Some people develop halogen acne from the fluoride in toothpaste, or from the fluoride in using a steroid of medium to high potency. Because to make that uh, chemical, they add fluoride to the molecule. So those are fluoride forming. You can have it also from uh, the bromides, cough medications. Uh, you can also have it from iodides by eating too much salty foods. <laughs> okay. 
there are some medications that are acnegenic. We call those more an acne, acne form drug eruption. So as you can see from the terminology, we don't consider it a real form of acne, but a kind of acne that develops that looks like uh, acne, a kind of skin change that looks like acne but isn't acne and is actually induced by certain drugs. Among them, for instance, would be the isoniazides from um, for TB and others, including brain stimulators and antidepressants like that, neuroleptic drugs. Those are the more common. Yeah, the mask, this is a new di disease that we've now been, dermatologists and some people have been calling maskne. Again, it's not a real acne, but it's actually due to several factors. The rubbing of the skin can make that skin, that follicle, hyperreact to produce a plug at the, po at the pore. The humidity in that mask against your skin can also produce more sweating there so that your sweat glands pores may actually come into the act and develop tiny little uniform dot-like areas in the skin which is more from what we call also sweat acne. And uh, there are also chemicals that are added to the mask you're using. One, for instance, is that blue colored material in the surgical masks. That's another chemical which with continuous contact, so the third factor is contact with chemicals, continuous fact, uh, contact with the skin uh, will, will also irritate the skin and uh, help in producing all the other inflammatory factors that is there. The management of acne is always, or any skin disease, is always to look first into the pathogenesis. Look for why it is there, and then define it according to the various factors I have talked to you about. I strongly urge you, when your acne has gone on for you know, a couple of months or a number of months, don't play around. Prevention is very important, and when you cannot solve it yourself, you must go to a dermatologist who understands and will ask you all sorts of questions like this and will help you discover what is the cause. Some of the better ways to manage acne is look at what stage you're in. If you have mainly whiteheads and blackheads, you must consider the products that you've been using might be the cause of it. If they are also very similar follicular units, they may be due to the fungal overgrowth in the skin. Okay, and uh, so you avoid those. And then in addition, the doctor will probably give you, if you have whiteheads and blackheads primarily, an acid, whether it's the very light one, uh, glycolic acid or mandelic acid, which, is, which I prefer actually, or retinoic acid, which is an amazing uh, chemical. And retin A and retinoic acid are Mm, great in that they actually act on the pilosebaceous unit and monolaurin for its antibacterial and antifungal. It's my favorite simply because unlike mo many of the antibiotics that are standard of care for acne, those antibiotics are really just antibacterial antibiotics and so they kill the bacteria and over time it may upset that balance and so the fungus sometimes grows a lot more than the, and, and then you have to treat that fungus. So I prefer the monolaurin because it's, it's, you know, it's broad spectrum so that it addresses both the bacteria as well as the fungus and may even have some effect on the mite called Demodex. Like virgin coconut oil, they have the uh, fatty acids that uh, become present on the skin and helps repair the barrier. You hear a lot about barrier repair nowadays. Well, guess what? In acne, with the causation, whatever it is, that may irritate the skin, with an allergy to exposure to chemicals in the air, the environment, and at home, with the irritation from other things that are within that area, then also being exposed to visible light all day long. Those factors are rather, um, you know, bad on the barrier layer of the skin. So 
slowly from each of those, you may have a barrier dysfunction. In acne, barrier dysfunction will make it worse because then bacteria, more bacteria, can go in and cause more inflammations, more papules, more postures. and I try this. I've already done this, you know, and I've done that. And so I asked them, can you please take a picture of the back label? And then they give and said, okay, so this one has this, this, this. That will give you more irritation, you know, because you should learn if you're the kind who experiments and looks out instead of going to the dermatologist who goes this way and that way and tries this and this and this might be a very, very nice thing because it's expensive. Don't do that to yourself. You know, you're spending money needlessly. Go see an expert on this. Listen to what they're saying. Contribute a lot with your history and um, follow the instructions or, you know, given by your doctor. Diet is very important also in the causation of acne. Sleep are very important because you need to rest that brain and it's also anti-inflammatory. Stress management, uh, management of your, uh, of your environment for chemicals. Meditation, folks, meditation. Keeps you calm and, you know, less stress.